for one, greatness is being sown into you through the word. Y'all get great teaching here. That's a great seed. That's a that's great material to start with. Then y'all get taught and trained through greatness. You get you have great examples before you. You have all the great, and then most importantly, you have the spirit of the great one available to you to live. The book of John, chapter 5, verse 19. And as you uh, turn to it, I will pray. Father, we just thank you for this day, dear Lord. We thank you for another opportunity, Lord, that we are gathered here in your house, dear Lord, your tabernacle, dear Lord. We thank you, Father, just for, for bringing us here safely, dear Lord. Thank you, Father, that we press our way in to be here this morning father we just thank you right now lord i speak against any distractions dear lord that may try to take our focus off this word take our mind off of what you are uh, saying to us this day lord open our eyes spiritually open our ears spiritually and open our hearts spiritually to receive the word that you have for us this morning lord i am your oracle sent on assignment Father, to heal, set free, and deliver those who may be um, bound, hallelujah, God, spiritually or, or mentally, Father. So I thank you right now for this word, dear Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 So um, our verse is St. John chapter 9, verse, cha excuse me, chapter 5, verse 19. And I am reading from the Amplified, Amen. Amen. So Jesus answered them by saying, I assure you and most solemnly say to you, the son can do nothing of himself of his own accord unless it is something he sees the father doing. For whatever things the father does, the son in his turn also does in the same way. Amen. Amen. So if you have been, you know, rocking with us here um, since January 2nd, 2022, you know that we have been talking about it's time to build. Right. So last week, uh, you know, Pastor, we were reminded we were reminded that it's not time to do nothing. It's time to build. And that's why we have been going so strong with this teaching the last month and a half, you know, teaching this series. And last week, um, you know, Pastor taught about submitted to be submitted. And one of the key nuggets that, you know, for me that, that kind of, you know, held on to was you cannot build a complete anything if you only follow half the plan. Amen. So in order to build anything, Right. You have to have the plan or the blueprint. And that's what we're going to discuss today based on our focal scripture found in John uh, chapter five, verse 19. So let me ask you um, this question. And if you you know, if you need a title for it, you know, of course, we're talking about it's time to build and you can, you know, put like a subheading the blueprint. OK, so um <laughs> Have you ever tried to put something together and uh, when you're done <laughs> or you think that you're done, you still have like half the screws in the package still on the floor? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, oh, well, oh, it's just me. Y'all y'all do everything. Oh, oh OK. <laughs> so so in, it's, it's because that when we put it together or when we try to put it together, we do it based off of the picture, what we see on the box and not following the direction. So we look at the picture and be like, oh yeah, this is how it goes. Let me put this, let me put that. But then when you look and see on the on the floor, you have like all these screws and it's like, wait a minute, why do I still have all these tools? And so that's that's just something to think about. We get frustrated because we got this, this jack leg thing that we put together <laughs> and we mad because it's not working right. What we have to understand is A, plus B plus C gets you to D. Many of us get mad, get, you know, we want to go from A to D, but don't realize that we need B and C because it serves a purpose and it's part of the plan. So we're, you know, we're just like, no, I just want to get to D, but B and C are necessary to help you get to D. So we, we, we just want to skip everything. 
Last week, Pastor Ed said, Jesus is the way. Jesus is the plan. Jesus is the blueprint. And Jesus provides the example for us as to how we are to build because it's time to build. And and we you know we're 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 not we're hoping that you guys really are grasping this because we're not saying it because it's cute. We're not saying it because it's cliche. I know that, you know, a lot of times when Pastor and I teach, we have, you know, our alliterations and, and acronyms and different things like that. We don't do that to, to try and be cute and try and get likes and all this. Ooh, wow. No, we do this because why? We said it. That's, we're, we, we are all needing to be equipped Okay, and if we are equipped, then we're able to build something. We don't. So, so I hope you guys really, you know, are understanding. So, let me give you the definition of blueprint. Okay, a blueprint is a detailed outline or plan of action. A detailed outline or a plan of action. As sons of God. Our plan of action is to only do what we see Father do. And that's, that's, that's what it said in our foundation scripture, in our focal text. How will we know what Father does unless we are in relationship with him? Right? How will we know? How can we see or how can we do what Father, you know, what we know Father if we don't know him, if we aren't in relationship with him? John chapter 15 verses 1 through 7 you can you know write this down but it talks about the truths of being connected and disconnected to the vine or the father so and it, it talks about you know the benefits and in and, and the not so benefits of being well the benefits of being in relationship or what happens when we're out of relationship with the father Jesus is saying look apart from me apart from the father apart from the vine you can do nothing nothing at all it's it's like you know if if you have a um you know a plant or or you see a tree or anything you, you don't even have to you know be in a horticulture but you understand that if a branch is not connected to the vine it is going to die a branch that is not connected to the vine it will not produce any fruit there will be nothing that it can do because it is not connected to the source that thing that gives it life so that is what, you know, what, what Jesus is saying. How are we able to, you know, imitate what Father does, what, what we see, you know, God doing if we're not in relationship with him, if we're not abiding with him, if we're not connected to him, having him pour into us so that we can see what he's doing so that we, in turn, can do the same thing. Last night, um, a Facebook, you know, we always joke about the, you know, the Facebook memories and be like, OK, you know what? There are certain things that we don't want to remind us in five years. You know, we joked uh, yesterday at outreach when um, Pastor had uh, mentioned something. He was like, no, nope, I don't want this to come up in five years. You know, but I had a quote that came up yesterday in, in my Facebook memories. And it says, as we become intimately acquainted with the word of God, we become intimately acquainted with the God of the word. That's that 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 intimacy, that relationship. This is how we learn and know what it is that Father does, so that we may do the same thing. And it's you know it is so. Let's. I'm just gonna you know even even kind of not scale it back in a way to, to to so we can really grasp it. Parents, you know your child. So if you if your child if someone says. Um, your child did something that you know is out of their character. You're like, mm -mm, that's not my child, Be because I know my child. But now, if you if your child did something that you know, you're like, yeah, that that's probably something that they did. That's something that they said. Um, so it's, you, but but that only comes with with the relationship. Even with you know, like learning um, your your friends or or someone you know who you've grown up with. It's 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 that it, the, the key point is the relationship spending that intimate time with that person that's how you know you know what that's not mm, that's not in line with their character that's not something that they would say 
That's not something that they would do. How would you know that unless you spend time with them, getting to know them, relationship, the intimacy. It, we, the world has distorted the word intimacy. They have made it about sex. That is not what it is about. Mm -hmm. Intimacy into me see. You see into me. You see what I don't show everyone. You see intimate the, 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 the fear or, or you know different things like that. That's what the intimacy is. It's getting closer, getting the, the closeness with someone. The world just so that we we kind of say it as a you know the, the, the church thinks it's like a taboo if someone says, you know, be intimate with the father. Be like, ew, what? No, intimate. Be intimate with, look into the Father as he looks into you. I hope that makes sense for y'all because that's good, good. Thank you for, for, you know, I'm glad that it makes sense because we have to, you know, get outside of, 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 of that, of, you know, thinking that, oh, I can't say that word. Intro. No, God is, he's a, it's, it's about relationship, amen? Yeah. Amen. As you, um, as you read and learn about the life of Jesus, you understand the great humility yeah. that he walked in during his ministry. And what I mean by that is, yes, of course, you know, he took on the form of flesh, mm -hmm. but he was still a deity. He was still part of the triune. And at any time, he could have pulled rank when it came when it became a little dicey. You know, so like when he was in the um, Garden of Gethsemane and when they came in to, you know, to arrest him and you know, he was like, y'all don't understand. I can call a whole, I'm paraphrasing this part. I can call a whole host of angels to come and rescue me. He could have pulled rank. Mm -hmm. But he understood pulling rank wasn't part of the plan. Mm -hmm. And we have to understand that too. Sometimes, so many of us, we think that, you know, we want to cut corners and deviate from the plan. But we think that we know a quicker way. Right. Or our way is better. Or honestly, we just don't want to do it. That's 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 what happens a lot of times when you know we be like you know what I don't I don't want to go through the process I don't want to go through this I don't want to go through that you know what I'm just gonna but listen we have to understand that God is omnipresent that means he's he's outside of time he's right here and he's like there told you know at the same time so as he's here today. He's here in 20 years. So he sees what's happening right now, and he sees what happens 20 years from now. So he sees both. So when he sees this, he's instruction, his instructions factor in what happens between February 20th, 2022, and February 20th, 2042. So mm. while we're like, oh, gosh, God is like, okay, you know what? In another four, 20 years... This is what's going to happen. And as long as you stick to the plan, mm -hmm. it's going to go according to what he has planned. But we're just like, you know what? Nope, nope, nope. I don't want to do this. The same way that, that we get, that you get frustrated, we get frustrated when we put the bookshelf together or, or the organizer together without following the plan. <coughs> it's the same way we get frustrated when we don't follow God's plan. But expect it all to work together because you love the Lord. We're like, oh no, it's all gonna work together because I love the Lord. No, be obedient and then it's gonna work, okay? Amen. We you know, we, we all say get the frustrated, we step outside of out of you know the, the lane that we're supposed to be in, and then when all of the bumps and the hiccups and the potholes, you know, Philly, we got some potholes, you hit the pothole and then you dent your rim and all this other stuff, and you get frustrated, You're like, oh Lord, look. No, God, like, <coughs> if you was just obedient and stay in that lane, mm -hmm. you would have had smooth sailing. Y'all yeah. well, don't want to believe me? Fine, but guess what I got? I got scripture. Mm -hmm. Let's. I'm going to give you two different examples of the importance of following the plan. Um, turn with me to the book of Joshua. Book of Joshua, chapter 6. The book of Joshua, chapter 6. Y'all know Joshua was my, my Old Testament boy. I mean, I just love everyone in the Bible, but you, you always have those people that you kind of just like, yeah. Joshua's one of them, amen? Yeah. So Joshua, let me open it in this, because I think I do need to read something. But amen. So Joshua, um, looking at chapter 6, this is, you know, familiar talking about the, the, the Jer you know, Jericho walls and everything. So 
in uh, verses 2 through 5, um, God gives the blueprint, right, or the detailed outline how to um, conquer Jericho. He, you know, he's telling him, he's like, okay, listen, God tells Joshua, this is, now Jericho is like a big city, got, you know, fortified walls and just, just everything. So, you know, God tells Joshua, all right, this is what you need to do. Boom, boom, boom. And Joshua, and I'm going to talk about that. Joshua and the children of Israel had to follow the instructions exactly how they were given. So, you know, God is telling him, he's like, all right, listen, this is what you do. Get the Levites, y'all walk around the city in silence one day, you know, once for the first six days. Okay? And then on the seventh day, y'all walk around it seven times, still quiet. But when the Levites blow the trumpet, y'all just rah, 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 make a whole bunch of noise. Boom, bada bang. The walls come tumbling down. Right? Joshua tells them, all right, this is what we got to do. This is what we got to do. They're like, all right, yeah, yeah, yeah. When you jump down to verses 18 and 19, God, this is important here. God says, but you keep yourselves from the things devoted to destruction. Lest when you have devoted them, uh, you take any of the devoted things and make the camp of Israel a thing for destruction and bring trouble upon it. But all the silver and gold and every vessel of bronze and honor are holy to the Lord. They should go into the treasury of the Lord. So basically God is saying, once you conquer the city, once you, you know, do all that I have instructed you, don't take anything except for you know the, the silver and the gold don't take any any whatever god is saying that this is very important right here and a lot of times the reason we don't want to follow the plan is because it doesn't always make sense to us right i, I know i'm not the only one if i'm the only one then you know hey i still got but and it's because it doesn't make sense to us we feel like we're not in control Ooh, because we're not in control, we can't do whatever. Whatever we are trying to be in control of, we can't do it. So we're, we're just like, you know what? This plan doesn't make sense. I'm not in control. So mm, that's dangerous. They probably look crazy walking around this, the, the city in silence, right? They probably look crazy. They probably look crazy when the trumpets, you know, blew and shouting and, ah, you know, and then, but guess what? They had crazy victory because of that. They looked crazy. You know, the people in Jericho were probably looking out this, you know, the stone windows. Like, what are they, what are they doing? What are they doing? Why are they making all that? Why are they walking? But when it was time, they had the crazy victory. So now remember when we said in verse 18, when God said not to take anything that was to be destroyed, right? The accursed thing. This is the flip side. So remember I said I was going to give you two examples. This is the flip side. So when you go over to the next um, chapter, in chapter 7, that's like a, a story that is, is so paramount, familiar, talked about, you know, and it has its own title, Aiken's Sin. So we have to understand that when we deviate from the plan, when we go rogue or when we go off on our own, we don't realize the negative ramifications, yeah. not only for ourselves, mm -hmm. but for those associated with us mm -hmm. and those down the road. Right. We, 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 because we get so focused on the present, the moment here and now. Mm -hmm. That's like, you know, we always, when, when we're out here doing outreach and, you know, we, um, you know, and, and when we talk to some of the young people, you know, when they try and, you know, talk about how big and bad they are whatever we're like you know what the enemy doesn't show you the the, the consequences of sin. he only shows you the temporary right here right now and as we've been out here 10 years that we've built we've built relationship with the people who come back so they they are honest and they talk to us and you know they're like you know what yeah my friends have pressured me like come on let's go get high and this yeah it looked fun but five, ten years later, they didn't tell me that I'd be, you know, sleeping on the street, you know, busting in the, the abandoned. They don't, be, we, because we only see the, the moment here and now. And that's even when, when we deviate from the plan. We, we, don't, we don't see what's going to happen down the road. 
So in, in, in Joshua 7, you know, verse 1, and this is this is the this is the reason why God was like, stick to the plan. Verse seven, verse seven, uh, chapter seven, verse one. But the sons of Israel acted unfaithfully and violated their obligation in regard to the things off limits under the ban. And I'm reading the Amplified. Those things belonging to the Lord for Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, and the son of Zerah, from the tribe of Judah, took some of the things under the ban for personal gain. Therefore. The anger of the Lord burned against the Israelites. So this, like, like I said, this, this whole chapter talks about, you know, the defiance of Joshua 6, 18 by, you know, Achan bringing sin into camp. God doesn't always tell us the full plan. We, we would so love it. But if he did, then, you know, you'd be like, well, well, what do we need it for? Do we trust? Him? No, God doesn't always tell us the full plan. So he gives us breadcrumbs. So that's. You know, kind of what he did here. He was like, "Listen, you just, just, just do what I tell you. Don't take any of the spoils." Could you imagine, like, so if God was to say, "Okay, Joshua, listen, you know, don't take any spoils because if you do, then you know this is this is you're gonna lose the battle that you are you know have to fight." God's just like, just, just trust me. We, but, but here's my question: Why are we like that? Why? Don't, why do we need to know everything in order to do something? Okay, I'll, why do I need to know everything in order to do something? Because I'm speaking to myself. Why can't we just trust and obey? Why don't we understand that God is for us and what he in, instructs and tells us is not going to lead any place that's going to be destructive, that's going to lead to our demise. No, God wouldn't do that. So why is it that, you know, that, 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 that was like, God, I need to know it all. I need to know everything. No, God is like, you don't need to know from A to Z. Just know from A to B. And once you get to B, then you can go to C. When we jump down to verses uh, 22 and 25, and this is, this is, ooh, this is it, y'all. So, so real quick, Joshua, you know, he asked Aiken. He was like, yo, Aiken, what happened? Because they now, they fought the battle, and they lost. And Joshua was like, yo, God, what, what's, what's up? Like, you said this battle was ours. We was going to have victory. But, like, what happened? Why did we lose? God was like, um, somebody didn't follow uh, the previous chapter 6, verse 18. So he was like, okay, so. Verse 22, so, you know, Joshua had asked Achan, he was like, did you do this? And Achan was like, yeah, you know, I did, the, the pretty garments and all this other stuff. So, Joshua sent messengers, and they ran to the tent, and they saw the stolen objects hidden in his tent with the silver underneath. And they took them from the tent and brought them to Joshua and to all the sons of Israel and spread them out before the Lord. And then Joshua and all Israel with him took Achan, the son of Zerah, the silver, the royal robe, the bar of gold, his sons, his daughters, his oxen, his donkeys, his sheep, his tent, and everything they had, and they brought them up to the valley of Achor. Mm -hmm. Joshua said, why have you brought disaster on us? The Lord will bring disaster this day. Then all Israel stoned them to death with mm -hmm. stones, Afterward, they burned their bodies in the fire. I read that. I was like, Lord, the oxen, the donkey, the sheep, what, the, what they had to do with anything. But what you don't understand is it's a domino effect. So basically, because of this, Aiken's whole lineage, they were wiped out. Everything associated with Aiken, the donkeys, you know, like so, one of his, you know, another another tribe couldn't, it, you know, couldn't take those donkeys as their own because then they would be bringing an accursed thing into there. So the the whole lineage of Aiken got wiped out, and and here's the thing, like he he was just so blind, he was like, you know what, no, 
God, I mean, will you really, like, you know, destroy us? This is not. God is like, listen, I need you to stick to the plan. It was a domino effect that happened. Achan, because he, you know, took what he, what he, because he deviated from the plan, you know, plain and simple, it started the domino effect. They lost the battle. They lost the battle. So Joshua was like, okay, what's going on? So the domino started. And you know how you, have you ever seen like, you know, when someone who, who creates like one of those crazy domino patterns and it's just, once that first domino fell, it was like, and you know how quickly it goes. It's like, yo, that took like three seconds and it took me three years to build this. That's how quick. So because of that, Aiken's whole and and this we you know we 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 joke about this you know often but it's like what do you want to be known for do you want to be known because honestly Aiken could have been like the bomb could have been like oh my gosh all up until this point but guess what he's known for bringing sin into the camp like do we think about it like what do I want my you know, we always say that your tombstone, what does the dash say in between the year you were born and the, in between the year that you died? What does your dash say? What does it signify? What does it represent? Did you want to say something? Amen. <laughs> you know, I thought Pastor had something to say, but praise God. So that's, that's you know, and the important thing is you can't build anything if you only follow half the plan. Mm-hmm. You cannot. So we have to stick to the plan Joshua um excuse me the book of John and then I'm, I'm just about done the book of John chapter 17 verse 4 and I'm reading this in the message John 17 chapter uh, verse 4 when we follow the blueprint okay John 17 verse 4 is what is what can be said and this is what Jesus says I have glorified you on earth by completing down to the last detail what you assigned me to do. This is like this is like a parallel to our focal verse of what what I see the Father do is what I do. Only what I see the Father do. So when when we grasp true sonship, when we understand we are in relationship with the Father, we will understand and adapt the lifestyle mm-hmm. like Father, like Son. Like father, like, and and honestly, I don't want to attempt, or I don't want to do anything on my own because it has not worked. It has not worked. I've tried it, and and you can try and you know, all right, well, well, let me maybe try and do it this way, and then no, okay, well, you know, let me try another way, and no, you know, let me let me do it God's way. Oh, scram! It worked. Hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. and, and 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 it's not like but but when you're in relationship with him and, and you know when you're submitted to be submitted and follow the plan you won't want to do otherwise mm-hmm. you you and, and it's it's you know not my will father's will and but when when we are in relationship with father it becomes our will that's you know what one of the one of the scriptures that people just always kind of you, you know God gives you the desires of your heart, but when you have that relationship and when you are truly in in you know sonship, the desires of your heart are what God desires. Mm-hmm. So you know people say, oh God give you the desires of your heart, okay. Yeah, but are your desires in line with what his heart wants? Uh, is your desire to, to, to see all who are out there hopeless have hope? Those who, that's what it is. So we have to follow and we have to stick to the blueprint because how can we, how can we truly build anything? How can we truly build anything if we're, you know, just like, eh, Toss out the blueprint. We we can't do that because you're gonna come with something jack leg, boot leg, you know. And, and as you know, uh, uh, Mother Plum said to me yesterday, the speak easy version. That's the that's the you know the 2022 boot leg. Now you know this. We have to and and we have to trust 
-hmm. We have to be patient. Mm -hmm. We have to truly be invested. We have to be submitted into the, the plan because God is like, oh, my goodness. Mm -hmm. We have to. We can't say, you know what, if, and if there's a hiccup, we can't just say, all right, you know what, forget it. We have to be like, all right, God, show me where, you know, I may have deviated a little, where I may have, you know, kind of skipped a step. We, we have to, you know, be like, because we don't want to do anything that is out of line with Father. So I just, I just pray and encourage all of y'all. We all need to stick to the blueprint, stick to what Father instructs and do only what we see him doing. And don't be, don't be, don't be scared. Like, don't be, don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed of that. Like, be proud of that. Be like, I, you know, I only do what I see, you know, Father do. I only say what I, what I hear. Because you know what? Him being pleased, him being glorified, that's what matters. That is what matters. Bunk, bunk the world, bunk everyone. If, if. Father is is pleased and is smiling. It's like, yeah, that's I'm Gucci with that. I'm I'm cool with that. I am so cool with that. If if it's anyone, if anyone else is saying, mm -mm. so I just I just pray all of you know we're we're all encouraged from today to to stick to the blueprint to to follow and do only say only what Father does what Father says. Amen. 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 Let's give God some praise. Amen. 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 God is great. Um, he is, he, is, he is so awesome. What a great a great message. The blueprint. Praise God. We're gonna uh, talk. <laughs> she got ahead of me, but it's okay. She gets. She gets we're gonna all. We're gonna. We gotta dig. We're gonna dig into the blueprint a little bit more in in the weeks to come. Amen. But um, one thing that um Pastor Janelle said, and I just wanted to really, you know, was I posted something in the um the live chat, but I wanted to share it with those of you who are here today. I really like um, lean into it because it's so very important. The purpose that God sent Moses to deliver the people was to bring them into a promised land so that they would no longer be slaves and bond servants to Egypt, but they would be brought into their own land, which would be given to them, and it would be an inheritance for all generations to follow. And he had a blueprint and he had a plan to bring that to pass. He talked about Achan and Achan did not follow the plan. He tried to get his inheritance before scheduled. So when they went into Jericho, he didn't wait for them to subdue the land and be given his inheritance. He tried to steal his inheritance. So because he tried to steal his inheritance, him, his family, the oxen, his tent, the stuff that he stole was all destroyed. His entire inheritance was destroyed because of his disobedience. And I want to lean into that heavily because Achan was given the plan, but he didn't understand the assignment. Many of us are given the plan, but you really need to understand the assignment. The assi the, it's not just for you to pay your bills today. It's so your grandkids can pay their bills 30 years from now. It's not so, it's not, <laughs> y'all got to get this. It's not just about, God wants each and every one of us to have an inheritance to give to our sons and our sons' sons and our daughters and our daughters' daughters. But we have to understand the assignment. It's not just about this moment. It's not just about this minute. It's about what God is trying to do. Big picture, you are a child of God. You are a son of God. You are a daughter of God. And guess what? That means he has an eternal promise for you. God is eternal. And his children are eternal as well. You have to understand that. And that was like, that was just a, a beautiful segment of scripture which showed and illustrated if your disobedience, it costs you more than just a moment. Mm -hmm. And we talked about those people in the street. Your disobedience, it costs you more than just a moment. 20 years, 30 years, they're still in addiction. Because they don't understand. They're giving up, they're, they're forfeiting their entire inheritance because they don't want to follow the blueprint and follow and understand the assignment. So I thank you for that that word. And I just wanted to share that with you guys on this day. Amen.